In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the import dialog inside of Lightroom. So for some people, when you first start using Lightroom, it can be a little bit intimidating. It's a slightly different interface than you're used to using with some of the ed other editing programs. But once you harness how powerful Lightroom is, you're never going to want to go back. It, it really uh, does a great job of cataloging your photos, organizing them, and then it's a really powerful editing tool as well. So uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the import process and kind of just start at the beginning and show you what the process is for importing your photos. So I've got my card here. I just went and did a photo shoot today. So I'm going to stick it in my card reader. And sometimes Lightroom is going to automatically recognize it. I've got that feature turned off. So I'm going to go to file, import photos and video. And when I do that, it's going to bring up the import dialog. Okay. So this is the import dialog. Uh, right now it's going through and it's looking at all the photos on the card and it's trying to find out which ones are new and which ones are, are already in my catalog. I do have some previously imported photos on this card. And, uh, so it went through and it, and I, it's right now because I have new photos selected right here. It's only looking at the new photos. If I had all photos, it's going to see all of the ones that are already imported into Lightroom. Uh, this is a useful feature because now I can't import duplicates of the exact same. Uh, I can't import duplicates of photos that I already have in my Lightroom catalog. So right now we have new photos selected. Now let's start at the beginning. Up here at the top, we have these different options. We have copy as DNG copy, move and add copy is as DNG. What that's going to do is it's going to import your photos and it's going to convert them to DNG files. Now DNG is basically Adobe's version of a raw file. It's the digital negative file. Now there's, there's other videos about DNG, but essentially the idea behind DNG is to make it, um, a, a, proprietary Adobe file. So it, essentially it's future proof. So if you're using a particular kind of uh, camera manufacturer and someday they go out of business, um, uh, let's, you know, like it, let's say Canon goes out of business, that DNG file is going to uh, basically convert it into a format that will be read forever. So you'll never lose your photos in theory. Uh, but it takes a lot of time to convert those. And frankly, Canon is never going to go out of business. So at this point, I, d I don't worry about converting to DNG. I just leave it as um, the original format. So um, the copy basically just copies copies the, the images right off of your card, puts them onto your hard drive. Very simple. Move would be if you are... Um, importing from another folder on your hard drive and you're wanting to reorganize your photos. Let's say you have them over here on your hard drive already. You're wanting to move them from there into a new folder system. Uh, that's why you would use uh, move to use add. Basically you say, okay, I've already got my photos on my hard drive. Now I just want to point Lightroom to them. And that's why you would use add. Basically, they're going to leave the photos there as they, wherever they are already, uh, but they're just adding it to your catalog. So that's those options. Now, as we go over here to the file handling tab, we have build smart previews, don't import selected duplicates, and make second copy too. Um, I always have don't import selected duplicates. That way I can't, you know, uh, upload photos that I've already uploaded. That would makes no sense. You're just going to end up with a mess that way. Build smart previews is really great for any time that you want to be able to edit your photos without actually having the photo connected to your computer. Say you're editing on a laptop, your photos are on an external hard drive. It's going to build a smart preview to where 
you can edit that file and you can do all kinds of things, even though uh, you don't have your hard drive attached at the moment. So it's good for that. Um, I'm on a desktop. My photos are always connected, so I don't worry about that. Make second copy too. This is great for automatically backing up your photos um, uh, from the get go. So like as I import them, they're going to import them not only to my main folder, but it's going to import them to a second folder, maybe on an external hard drive, and it's going to be a copy of that. The problem with doing it this way is that it's not in the same folder structure as Lightroom is. So let's say you have your hard drive fail. When you go to, uh, you know, point Lightroom at all the all your backups, it's not going to be in the same folder structure and it's going to be a mess. So I don't do that because I back up all of my photos with um, the sync tool or sync toy, Microsoft sync toy. Um, so I don't use that particular feature. And then you can also add all of these photos to a collection. So let's say you have landscapes or let's say you have portraits or weddings or whatever. You can add your photos to a collection as you import. Pretty cool. Okay, so moving down, we have file renaming. You can rename your file. You can, uh, let's say you shoot a wedding, you can rename it to the last name of the couple, whatever. You go on a, on a vacation, you can rename all of the photos, you know, Paris vacation or, you know, Disneyland, and you can rename your files here. Okay, so apply during import. This is a useful one. It's really great if you have, like, a particular... Uh, um, preset that you or a particular set of things that you do you apply to all your photos so like I have a particular set of edits that I apply to all my portraits and so I just you know I will just apply that particular preset to all of these as they're being um, imported that, that can be really useful you can apply metadata presets um, is I don't really do that because I apply my metadata in camera. I have, you know, it says Nick Page Photography under the copyright in my camera. I don't have to do that, but you could do that in Lightroom if your camera doesn't have that feature. Keywords. This one's big. This one helps you to find your photos later on. So all of these photos here are all landscapes. They're all from Steptoe Butte. They're all in the Palouse. So <clears throat> when I go to keywords, I could do landscapes. Landscape. Landscapes. In case I search for landscapes instead of landscape, I could do step toe butte. I could do Palouse. And all of these keywords are going to be searchable later on. That way, if I'm looking for a photo of step toe butte, I can refer these keywords will refer me back to these photos. Very, very useful for being able to find your photos, say, five years down the line. You're not going to have any idea of where these photos are, but it's nice if you can do a search for keyword. Now, destination is the next tab, and this is probably the most important one, and it's also uh, the most confusing one when you're first getting started with Lightroom. Uh, the, uh, the first question that everybody asks when they import to Lightroom is where are my photos? Because they you don't know where they're being uploaded to. So uh, destination is basically where are the photos going to be uploaded to on your computer? Very, very important thing to know. So here you can have all your different hard drives. You can see I've got a whole bunch of different hard drives. You select your hard drive, then you select your folder. And then up here at the top, you can put it into a subfolder in whatever folder you are uploading to. For example, let's say um, you're uploaded to, uploading to your landscapes folder. You can um, create a subfolder called Palouse Visit or Palouse Tour or whatever. Let's say you go to Disneyland and you could, or let's say you take a trip to Disneyland. You can say vacation photos and then add the subfolder. Uh, Disneyland 2016, whatever. So up here you can add subfolders. You can organize by date or upload into one folder. So obviously, um, if you select by date, it's going to separate all your photos and organize them by date in a separate folder for every date. Or one folder is going to be 
one folder. So it's going to dump all your photos into one single fol folder. Then you can change your date format. You can change it from, they have all these different formats. And then down here, you select your hard drive and your folder structure. So I have a landscapes um, folder. So that's where I'm going to upload these to. And then that's pretty much it. I'm going to hit import. It's going to begin to uh, copy all those folders or all those photos from my uh, CF card to my hard drive. And then after it imports them all, it's going to build all of the previews and they're going to be there ready to go. And I can begin to edit um, pretty much once a week at the very least, I back up all of my photos. That's a really important step. You want to make sure that you have your photos in it at the very least two places because hard drives it fail. It's not a question of if it's a question of when they're always going to fail. And the last thing you want to do is lose every single photo because a hard drive crashed. So you want to make sure that you back up your photos onto another hard drive and then ideally upload your photos to an online cloud uh, resource of some kind. Whether it's, you know, you're just uploading your favorite photos and you're uploading them to a Google Drive or a Dropbox folder, something like that is going to help. And that way, if your house burns down, somebody breaks in, steals all your stuff, you've at least got your favorites up on the cloud and you can download those. There's tons of other videos about that stuff. Tim Gray is a really great guy to uh, listen to for stuff like this. He's very knowledgeable about when it comes to uh, file management. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the Lightroom import dialog, and hopefully this has been useful. Make sure you like, subscribe, and ask any questions that you might have, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.